Welcome to Thriving the Future podcast, where we're finding positive solutions to thrive in the tough times ahead. Episode 11, Overcoming Imposter Syndrome. Okay, so we've talked about trade-offs. There are no solutions, only trade-offs by Thomas Sowell. So one of the things we started talking about was the imposter syndrome. Right. Right. So self-doubt. Yeah, self-doubt. The imposter syndrome. Yes, it, it's big. Let's see. Um, so what's what's imposter syndrome for those who haven't really heard about it? Okay, imposter syndrome. It's when you feel like you're going to be called out for something, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to go, oh, look at him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Or he he's stupid. He's right. silly. He's You're going to be called out on your inability to do something. Mm-hmm. You feel like you're unworthy of it. And deserve is kind of the opposite, right? I deserve that. Mm-hmm. But that's really an excuse for covering up your unworthiness because so let's go give an uh, let's give an example okay. someone starts a side hustle i think yeah, anything they're going to do any venture you can have this going to make a speech yeah you, you, you write the same report, thing at yeah. your regular job whatever right in school kids yeah, face school. this all the time yeah. right mm-hmm. i've got to read before the in front of the class mm-hmm. i have to, oh god that's terrible um <laughs> and it's not just imposter syndrome for some of them i mean it's some of them you know like kids with dyslexia it is actually Hard, but the imposter syndrome makes it harder. So let's let's yeah. let's define imposter syndrome a little bit more with some examples. So that we've given several examples, rapid fire right. there. Say you're moving into a new thing, right? So mm-hmm. I'm I'm growing trees as a side hustle. Are you a botanist? Exactly. Somebody says, "Well, you know, what's the what's the what, what's your experience? What's the Latin, what's the rootstock? Yeah, what's the what's the Latin term for that?" That's right. every you know you see all these people that are thrown around the Latin and even when you know it you feel like you can't pronounce it and now that you've been put on the spot your mind starts to go blank and well, I don't care what the Latin term is so you well, know but, whatever but <laughs> I'm giving right. the example of imposter syndrome right that's what it starts doing sure. to you right your mm-hmm. mind blanks and you go and then you you start making excuses and you get mumbly and yeah those things right mm-hmm. it's perfectly normal right it is perfectly normal it is okay. Mm-hmm. Do you know what it means? It means you're getting ready to grow. I like it because because you're 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 not doing everything that's completely within your competency. Mm-hmm. You're pushing, yeah, the so boundaries. Like you're pushing goal, right? the limits, right? Yeah, and, and, and whether that whether you're perfectly competent growing those trees and knowing your information, mm-hmm. that conversation with people and that telling them about your product and proposing your value that you're pro- providing them, right is new and you don't have confidence and competency in that as well at right and so the imposter syndrome shows up sure yeah it start but it's perfectly normal mm-hmm. and what makes that easier is confidence so you you genetically gifted with confidence <laughs> so is competence genetic or learned it's a skill right it's completely a skill, 100% sure. a skill. Mm-hmm. It is not genetic. It is not. Some people have a natural talent for it, but it is still a skill. Mm-hmm. They're just more practiced in it. And you need to really hear that. So I'm going to say it again, that it is not genetic. It is not completely a talent. It is a skill and a skill can be learned. And it is a skill. It's a skill of competency. And you learn that by doing the thing. You try something new. Mm-hmm. You're either going to succeed or you're going to fail. We know that. Right. If you fail, you learn something. If you succeed, you gain competency in that thing you tried. Yeah, I like the example you gave the other day. So um, you asked a person, if you failed at this, what are you, what are you really out? Right. Right. Yeah. So, you know, um, this person is, is doing a side hustle and they're not sure. And they're not sure if they're going to, if, if they're going to make it or they're not sure completely whether the customer is going to be satisfied. And and then you asked, okay, so, you know, so what do we do to make it right? Yeah. What do we do to make it right? You failed this customer. What do you, what, what can you offer them to make it right? Mm -hmm. So let's say you're taking you're doing a virus cleaning on their computer right so mm. don't all that right right and you can't get it off mm-hmm. and you can't fix it what do you do to make that right 
The easy answer is I pay for them to take it to a better technician than me to clean it up. Yeah, either that or you right? just don't charge them, right? Well, I don't charge them. But it, worst case scenario, to make that right, if they are completely angry at me and yelling and screaming, I can do that, right? Mm-hmm. And that's happened to me before. And so before going into that, I can find out who, like, the best guy in town is and what he charges, right? Mm -hmm. And start setting that money aside so I have it before I go into this deal. So right. that I've got that back. I can make this situation right if it goes wrong. And that that removes some of that fear, right? Right. Th and, and you don't hit the wall if you still have steps that are possible. Right. They may not be and good then, steps. And then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to that guy that they took the computer to because mm -hmm. I'm going to make the call. And I'm going to say, I've hit this thing. I can't fix it for my client. I am going to pay for my clients to this for you to work on this computer for my client. Can I come sit there and watch you? Mm. Will you teach me how to do it? Mm. Good. Will you make me better at this? Right. Right. But every time that I do succeed on that, I create confidence that I can do it next time. Right. But I've also got confidence because I've got this backup. Mm -hmm. And maybe I call that guy and set it up before I start doing this stuff. Right. Because... If I can't do it, he, he's going to want the business, right? Sure. And if I'm good at it, he may want an employee. Or he may want a partner and we send excess work to each other, right? Th mm -hmm. Those are all things that could happen. But that confidence, and even my confidence in saying that, right, comes from the skill of having failed over and over and over or made somebody mad and figured out how to get out of it. Right, uh-huh. Because sure. it sound, I'm sure it sounds like, wow, where does he come up with that off the top of his head, right? Mm -hmm. But I've been through those situations. What am I going to do that I pissed this person off? How am I going to make it right? Mm -hmm. And when you get through that, it gives you some comfort to deal with some of that imposter syndrome. But it's still a skill, mm -hmm. and you're going to learn it. Every time you succeed, you gain competency. Competency creates confidence. So let's talk about the person who is is doing their side hustle, and they're they have self-doubt or you know like we talked about they're not letting the customer weed themselves out right so right. they're selling for they're barely making it and they're not including their own labor of course so you know okay that's then, good yeah place to start yeah. you know what confidence is the willingness to try mm -hmm. well and as we've heard it's the willingness keep doing to try Keep doing something, whether it's a side hustle or it's a job, until you stop learning new things. And then find something else that challenges you. Right. And, right? and, and, if, and if that side hustle or that thing you're doing is paying for your whole life and you have everything, mm -hmm. time to pick up a hobby. Yeah. That's how you stay thriving, is you continue to practice that confidence of learning a new skill. Sure. Do it and fail. Do it and fail. Every time you fail, you learn a lesson or you learn a new question to ask. Everybody starting a side hustle or talked about it. I've talked to people. One guy wants to grow tomatoes for the farmer's market. And um, he, he, he said to me, but I don't know this. And so I'm waiting till I get this answer. I'm waiting till I get this answer. And I don't know this thing. And I, and I said, go answer those questions, but stop looking for questions and mm -hmm. go do it. Right. Because fallacy. Be well, it's, it's, it's a toolbox fallacy, but it's also the, you don't know what is actually going to call, what is actually going to be the hurdle. Mm -hmm. And you can answer all the questions and go into it, and then you're going to hit the hurdles. Sure. And those failures are going to be the questions you really needed to have been answering. Yeah. But you, you're right. It's a toolbox fallacy. You yeah, cannot shooter, wait. And Shudas reminded us of, of that this week. Okay. Not only do you have that, but the toolbox fallacy is... I can't do this unless I have this, or I can't do that unless I get this, or I get it's to this the wrong mindset. point. Yeah, it's it, it is. It is looking for what I must have to do something mm -hmm. instead of asking, what can I do to right. make this happen? Sure. Right? Yeah, so, you know, so I can't do this unless I get Adobe Photoshop, and I don't have the money for Photoshop. So, oh, well, figure something else out. No. You don't have the money for Adobe Photoshop? No. Are you are you going into graphic engineering? Just play with me. Are you going to do graphic design, right? If you're going to do Adobe, right? Sure. You don't have the money for it? Then maybe you need to book some clients and have them prepay part of the fee mm -hmm. and go get Adobe. You're asking, 
that person is asking, I don't have this, so I can't do it. Not right. asking, how can I afford this to do sure. this, right? It, it, it's flipping it around, and all of a sudden, the solutions become clear. Or maybe I figure out how to get some people to prepay, and I do some stuff with GIMP or one of the tools that doesn't work as well, right, or right, I do right. more, right? That's what I am Until doing. I get it, right? There are many ways to solve that, mm -hmm. but until you're asking, how can I make this work? You're just sitting around going, one day, one day, mm -hmm. one day. Right. You, 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 and the sooner you set the intention for your life, the sooner you can start making the trade-offs that end up pushing you in that direction to go there, right? Mm -hmm. If you want a homestead, then you need, that is your intention and direction for your life, and you don't have it because you're stuck in the city, then my question would be, are you paying Amazon Prime? Are you paying for Disney? Are you paying for Netflix? Are, all that money should stop being paid. Mm -hmm. And that all should go into savings to start on your down payment. Yeah. How many times a week are you going out to eat? What restaurants are you picking to do that in? You're going to homestead. You aren't going to be near the restaurants. You need to start to learn to cook. Right. Or, you know, but, or but, like but, but, but when you're asking how... Sure. Do I get there? Those things become obvious, and you start doing them. But you don't necessarily have to, if I only had land, right? I mean, what? you know, Curtis Stone went and begged and borrowed and whatever to... The uh, best carrots I grew grew in a flower box, yeah. on a ledge, in an apartment in a big city. Right. So he went and he got... the potting soil was, like, perfect for them, right? <laughs> right. He went and got the... He went and got a vacant lot. I don't remember the first one. I think so, somewhere in there, I think he also rented or borrowed a backyard. Yeah, sure. And maybe so, his mom's backyard. Right. right? So he but, went to some old folks or something and said, can I use your backyard and uh, create a garden? And if I do, I will pay you, trade you, whatever. You'll get certain amount of vegetables out of here, whatever. Right? Right. But he was asking how. Right. How do I make this happen? Yeah. And then, yeah, instead of saying, I don't have any land. Right. I don't have the I don't have a I don't have the money to do a down payment on a loan. It's it's going and uh and and figuring that stuff out, right? right. Surely you yeah, have yeah. a friend who who wouldn't mind okay. you growing a garden. What on what, their what land. do you call that thing when you don't have adobe or you don't have the land? What is that called? That's a roadblock, but what's another name for that? Hurdle. Mhm. Mm so some some hurdle. people call it a problem. Ah, yeah, okay. You can only have a problem if there's no action you can take. Mm. Okay. Right? If there's any action you can come up with that you can take, you don't have a problem. You're not doing anything. Hmm. Every action you can take means there's a solution to that problem. It's not a real problem yet. When you hit that thing and there is nothing you can do about it, it's either a problem or it's outside your sphere of influence. Yep, outside of circle of influence. Circle, circle of influence, yeah, yeah. circle of influence, circle of control, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Interesting, yep. So, not only there are no solutions, only trade-offs, there are no problems if you can take an action. Hmm. Good. So you need to find actions. If you can't find any actions on it, then maybe you have a problem. And if you've got a problem that big, then um, you need to be talking to some friends or you need to hop in the Telegram group and present us with a problem because I want to see a real one. Sure. Somebody give me a problem. <laughs> and, and, and there are people that can come up with a problem. Right. Because I've talked to them. I mean, yeah. I mean, And if you've got a real problem, you need help. Then you need community because that's where you get help. Right. That's how you thrive. You know right. you're thriving when, if something happens, you know, you know a guy. guy. <laughs> right. When you have a problem, <laughs> a couple guys. you know a guy, right? <laughs> right. You had that this weekend. Yeah, yeah. We had a water main break at my house. And you didn't quite have a problem, right? Because there was actions you could take. Right. You could dig it up all yourself. Mm-hmm. And take it, make it take two days. True. Maybe three. <laughs> it was a big yeah, hole. It would have been to take a long time. Yeah. Right. And you saved yourself a lot of time because you had somebody you could call on the telephone while you walked all the way down the drive to 
turn on the water and we can watch it and go, okay, yeah, you need to turn that off. Yeah. And By the, the time you would have walked back up there, yep. it would have been a nice full hole. Yeah, that would have been all the way. Yeah, so basically what happened was there was a root, the tree root, that was at least as wide as my forearm. And it, would, and it snapped the pipe. It didn't just snap the pipe. It snapped the pipe coupling. Yeah. And so when we turned the water back on, we thought, you know, to see where it was at when we finally dug down six feet, then uh, it was shooting out pretty good. And yeah, like you said, if I would have had to walk all the way back up the driveway, mm, I was doing it to, myself. You had to bail out a hole. Yeah, we would have had a f pretty full hole. Yeah. So yeah, and that's that's the importance of community, right? Right. So how, we should talk about some tips to deal with imposter syndrome mm -hmm. because it can lead to severe anxiety or even panic attacks for some sure. people and right? it does i've seen and it what you have to do is say i'm getting stressed mm -hmm. this is overwhelming me and you may need to take a pause right yeah but you can't ignore it numb it away you still one, have to face it yeah one of the things that really helped with me was to i i used to take it personally when people were criticizing you know you have a difficult customer right mm -hmm. and the customer's upset about the situation but i was taking it personally and and uh when you know in my younger days and then uh and then would get argumentative or whatever so you know one of the key things is you know is they're not attacking me they're not happy about the situation and there may be some things that I did that they're not happy about, but they're not directly attacking me. They want their problem fixed. Right. So, you know, but that's, that's, that's that two sided coin, right? Right. Um, people can either blame you mm -hmm. or they can think you're the most wonderful person in the world. Right. Sure. And when somebody comes to you and says, you created a problem, or I have a problem and it's your fault, your first reaction is to downplay how big the problem is, right? If you downplay it, then they have to upplay it to get it solved. Mm -hmm. If you make it the biggest problem in the world, they have the choice of saying, it's not that big a deal. I'm sure you could solve it. Sure. Right? Those, that coin is going to be played. Mm -hmm. You actually have the opportunity to decide which side the other person is going to play. Right. Are they going to play, this is the biggest problem in the world, or are you going to take, this is the biggest problem in the world? And the funny thing is, that I've seen, is if the customer is really upset about it, you have to you have, to have a, a good enough relationship with them so you know what they want to hear. Now, I'm not saying you just tell right. them what they want to hear, but I've seen that if you are calm and you let them know that you're handling it and you acknowledge them and you hear them right that some places depending have the culture that if you're not running around with your hair on fire you're not taking it seriously why does everybody hate telemarketing or when you do tell when you call in and take, like you have a problem with your phone and you call and you get the call center oh. why does everybody hate that well cuz most of the time they put you on hold right they play annoying music mhm mm they treat you like you're stupid. Mm -hmm. You're trying to say I have a problem. They're saying it's not a big deal. No, they're following a, following wait, wait, a script wait, too. Right, right. But everyone's heard that story where somebody went to a hotel and they had a bad thing and the hotel just like comped them new rooms, comped them breakfast and dinner and drinks at the bar or whatever. Right? And everybody goes, wow, that's great customer service. Mm -hmm. But the hotel said... Your problem is the biggest problem in the world, and we're going to solve it. Mm -hmm. So all you had to say is, it wasn't that big a deal, and I love you. No one likes calling the call centers sure, because they're telling you, your problem is not important. Mm -hmm. You're annoying. Go away. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to solve your problem. And people hate that. Mm -hmm. But when they're coming to you, you have the choice of how it's going to play out. You've got to make it a big problem. Sure. You've got to tell them, holy, I can't believe we made I, I don't know what we're going to do to fix this right yet. We're, let's explore the problem because, wow, this is big and I'm going to stop everything I'm doing and fix this, right? Mm -hmm. 
if I said that about your computer problem, you're like, relieved. So, so back to imposter syndrome. Sometimes it hits you and you don't see it coming, right? Mm-hmm. And the signs for things like that are you're shirking. Well, nobody will notice. I'll just do enough to get by, right? Mm. You're procrastinating. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it. I'll do it ten minutes from now. I'll I'll take a nap first. I'll mm. clean first. I will, you know, right? Interesting. You're avoiding it. Oh, that's so and so, and I oh, so walk the other way, right? You're you're avoiding every situation, anything that brings it up. And you're doing that. You're being silent. Mm-hmm. Like if you're working, if you're working with somebody, right, on a team project right now all of a sudden go completely silent and you can't get responses from them do you know they're in over their head or you know something is wrong right 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 but when you find yourself going silent you're doing that thing somebody's gonna say i'm not a good programmer Mm. right Mm. if if i take this problem they're gonna see it right away i know it because it happens over and and you're you're hitting that imposter syndrome Mm-hmm. It's in your head, beating at you. Right, right. You're not good. You're not good enough. They're going to point out you're not good, right? And what you're going is, I don't want to get fired. It, 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 it's all that imposter. You're being silent. You're not communicating. Sure. So when you notice you're not communicating, you need to start communicating, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Those are those are good things to watch for. So what's the what are some of the the tips to overcome it? You said acknowledge their problem. Yeah, acknowledge their problem. Mm-hmm. If it's that situation, right? Right. The other is that you just, you have to realize it's normal. Mm. I'm lacking in confidence. Mm-hmm. I get confidence from competency. Right. I get competency by trying something new. Mm-hmm. I am not asking for help writing this program. I need to try something new. I need to ask for help. Sure. And don't pose it as, I'm completely stupid and I can't figure this out, right? You can propose it as, okay, so how would you deal with this? Mm-hmm. Or, I'm a little bit stuck or I'm running behind. How would you? You're not saying that you're awful, right? Right. Everybody gets behind writing a program. It's mm-hmm. just the nature of it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Can I talk this through with you because it helps me think it through? Right? You can do all of those that don't make you look stupid. Mm-hmm. It's a new way of trying it, right? And each time you do that, you build competency. And when you build competency, you build confidence. And when you have confidence, the imposter syndrome doesn't come for you. Sure. But it's normal. 100% normal. Everybody's feeling it all day long. Yeah. The most confident people have only, I've already learned that confidence is willingness to try. Mm-hmm. So you try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, another thing when you said it's it's normal, another thing to keep in mind is it's normal for things to go wrong. <laughs> it it it's surprising how many people are surprised were surprised when things go wrong. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have Murphy, Murphy's law. Things are going to go wrong. I mean, you Everything know, Everything that can we, go wrong will go wrong. Right, right. right. And it's you know, and or, uh, sometimes yeah. that's just the way it is and then you say, "Okay, so what are we going to do? Let's take a step back. Let's let's look at this and come up with what a, happened. What you're going to do is you're going to say it is normal to feel this way. Yeah, I cannot control my emotions. I'm going to have them. Right? You get in a car wreck. Yeah. You have adrenaline going, or you have mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. dead, mm-hmm. complete, quiet, calm, and you have the panic later. Right? Those are, yeah. That's all fight, fight, fear. This is the same thing. Sure. Mm-hmm. It's beating on you. You've hit that trade off you don't want to make. You are ignoring it. You are putting it off. Mm -hmm. Those are all the signs that you're having imposter syndrome, right? What is the neighbor going to think if I don't have this, right? They're going to accuse me of not being good enough. I'm not quality, right? That's imposter syndrome. It's in your head. It's getting at you. And you have to say, I cannot control the emotions. I'm going to have them because I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. I can choose how I am going to go forward or make a decision or react to them. Right. And I am going to choose to ask, how can I get through this? How can I deal with this? Rather than what has to happen for me to deal with. Mm-hmm. I get out of the toolbox fast. You skip all those, right? You're saying, how am I going to do this? How am I going to make this work? Mm-hmm. And then you try that new thing and you just do that process over and over and over. 
because this is normal. And yeah. if you're, if you're going to try a side hustle or you're going to lose your job or you lost your job or any of those things, right? Anytime you're falling out of thriving, you are going to have to deal with this. And this is the way out. Sure. How am I going to deal with this? This is normal. I can't control my emotions. I am going to do this new thing to build this loop. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on, on the imposter syndrome and the toolbox fallacy? I think they're normal and it's just a trap we fall into. Mm -hmm. and, and you can work it out. And usually you need a friend to talk to. Sure. Because you can't see that that's a, where you're at. A mentor? What? <laughs> if you don't have a friend, get a mentor. <laughs> yeah. And if you, and if all your friends can't help you. You don't need a mentor you, if you have a friend. <laughs> right. But th there are times where you're, if you're really doing this right, if you're really stretching and growing, you've got imposter syndrome really, really bad. Mm -hmm. But if you're stretching and growing past all your friends, you may need a mentor because your friends can't help you because they haven't gotten there, right? Right. Everything you have done up to now has gotten you where you are. Mm -hmm. It won't get you where you want to go. It only gets you here. It ends up here. To get that other part, you've got to figure out how to go. And maybe you need a mentor for that. I, I really think friends can do it for you, help you do it, if you've got them. And if you don't, well, get a mentor. Yeah, so hang in there and... Hang in there and try something new. Try something new, develop a new skill. Fi find a skill, and that's the same thing with skills, right? Mm -hmm. This is skills over stuff. <laughs> skills over stuff. Thank you for listening to the Thrive in the Future podcast. Check us out on our website, thriveinthefuture.com. Also, follow us on Twitter at Thriving the Feud, and come join our community chat on Telegram. It has a link in the website. This podcast was produced by Scott, the Freedom Farmer, freedomfarmer.net.